coolest occupations. In this video, I'll talk about some of the coolest occupations a person can have. If you want to find and nurture your ideal vocation, occupation, or hobby, remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to know when a new video is up. Also, if you like this video, remember to hit the like button, comment below, and share it with your friends. All right, so before we begin, what do we mean when we say cool occupations? Well, we decided to go with occupations that are either fun, interesting, or they're just chill to do. Now, let's start. The first one is matchmaker. A professional matchmaker does their best to put two people together for a long-term relationship. Today, when we have that online dating has become something that's very normal, doing something like professional matchmaking can be very lucrative, provided that you can provide the goods. All right, number two, sustainability officer. So what is sustainable development? Well, sustainable development is a recent concept, so to speak, in the sense that it's being studied now in some universities and there are many companies and organizations that are making a lot of effort to do their things sustainably. So what does this mean? In other words, sustainable development is about uh, creating more goods and services, creating a bigger economy for everyone, but at the same time doing so in a way that doesn't harm the environment and that does not harm the cultural heritage of the people, of history, and that doesn't actually affect poor people more or exploit the human beings and the human race in general. So for example, there are many, uh, in pop culture, culture, there are a lot of movies about, oh, the end of the world, we, we exploited the planet in a way that we will have to, as a species, migrate to a different planet. Well, that's the whole thing. That, that might happen if we exploit our resources in a way that is not sustainable. So what does a sustainability officer do? Well, basically you just make sure that the company you're with is conducting business, doing operations in a way that's sustainable. Now that sustainability might be different for your company, but you may also be in charge of creating those norms that your company should abide to. Uh, and making sure that you have that. So this is something that can actually also be very good for PR purposes. Uh, and at the end of the day, as an occupation, it's very interesting. So you can always talk about that uh, whenever someone asks about what you do, and you will al always have that do-gooder halo about you. Number three, on the road musicians. So as you've seen, many celebrated musicians, they spend most of their time on world tours, just going from one city to the next doing concerts and promoting their discs, their latest album, and all that stuff. Now, many of them will need assistance. They will need other extra musicians to be able to play uh, what they're going to play in the venue that they're in. So basically, you could be a musician that's kind of like an extra that's going to help uh, in, our, in the concert, is going to play a part, that maybe they need more people to play those things. You've seen this in many places. So if you like, really like playing your instrument, you're good at it, and you really want to be on the road, uh, being about and everything, this might be for you. Uh, some, some people call it being a roadie, uh, being an on the road musician. It's kind of like a, being an extra actor, but more because you actually get to play your instrument and be part of the, of the deal. Number four, music therapist. Now there are all kinds of therapists in this world, but the ability to use music, which is very powerful, a very powerful motivator, something that can evoke a lot of things on people in order to help people cope with some physical and emotional uh, problems that they have is can be very powerful. Obviously, you can't just start doing this. You will have to really study your craft and get good at it because you will have to diagnose your patients and you will also have to come up with your own plans of treatment for them. And you'd better be someone who can actually deliver the intended result. Comment below if you know of other cool occupations we haven't mentioned before. Number five, brewing beer. Do you like beer? If so, how about making your own type of beer and selling it? Brewing became very popular a few years ago. While this can be a very fun way of making a living, make certain that you're okay dealing with all of the production and distribution issues that you'll have to face if you want to actually make a living off of it. Number six, art purchaser or acquisitions manager. How about mixing finance and art? Basically, an art purchaser does what it says it does. You purchase art. You probably do it for a gallery, a company, a hotel, or some other organization that needs art as part of its operations. 
So what is it that you do exactly? Well, let's put it this way. If you are a, a purchasing agent, you need to make sure that you're making a good purchase. And in order to do that, you need to have two things. One is a good understanding of the art that you're purchasing, that it actually complies with the needs of the organization that you work for. And number two, that the art is a good financial decision when you purchase it. So for example, if a gallery wants to purchase art that's going to be able to be sold at a higher price, then you gotta be able to find that art that you believe is going to appreciate in value that you will be able to flip and make sure that you actually purchase it at a good price. Maybe you're acquiring art for a hotel chain and you know that the art needs to really mix in with the type of art and the type of look and feel that the hotel likes to give its uh, clients, right? So maybe if it's a very luxurious hotel chain and they have a certain, certain standards that they have to comply with, you gotta make sure that the art you're purchasing is one that will actually look good within that hotel's culture and that experience that they're creating. A good mix of both numbers and art, this will actually be something that will be a good occupation to make good conversation with your friends that are both poets and quantitative freaks. Number seven, sommelier. So basically, if you really, really like tasting wine and you like to pretend that you are the most sophisticated person in the room, even if no one else there likes wine at all, then this might be the occupation for you. We've covered it a few times already, but some of those occupations in which you can actually just test or try out a lot of the things you already like can be pretty cool occupations to have. Uh, especially if you're the kind of person who doesn't really get tired of doing it over and over again. And in this case, you actually get to learn mastery of it as you learn all the distinctions of the different kinds of wines, uh, how old they are, uh, what kind of grapes they used uh, in the production, right? Like, I don't know anything about that. So this is something that you might want to look into. Number eight, travel blogger or writer. So you've probably heard of this uh, before, of people who actually make a living traveling, blogging, and all that kind of stuff. And you might be wondering, okay, so what is a travel writer? Is that the same as a blogger? Yes and no. And in a way, a travel blogger or writer is someone who actually get, goes to a hotel or another organization and experiences what they have to offer. And then they write a rave review for either Yelp or their own blog or some other place where a lot of people that like to travel uh, frequent in the internet and they do it so online. So basically what, the, what they're doing is they're making a living off of reviewing the experiences and that's pretty much it. It's kind of like, it's similar to like tasting chocolate, tasting ice cream and some of the other testing categories of occupations that we've covered here. And in reality, it, you might think this is for other people, not for me. Uh, yes and no. I mean, it depends. Like some people actually get to travel blog because they've actually built an audience that allows them to get sponsorships from brands and other organizations that will pay them in order to write those reviews for their audiences, right? So if this is something that has grabbed your attention, you can always just go online and research, okay, how can I actually do this? If you're really serious about it, about it you will make it happen, right? Number nine, art restorer or appraiser. So actually many nonprofits or museums uh, might be interested or are interested actually in having people who can uh, take care, good care of the antiques and of the heritage pieces that they have. This will obviously require a certain level of sophistication in terms of uh, having that knowledge of the history of the piece, knowing how they're supposed to look like, knowing the materials they're made of and the processes. Uh, that you can use in order to restore them and to keep them in top shape. It will also be very useful if you really care about art in general and this is something that you feel uh, enthralled by. Uh, the, the fact that you're updating pieces, checking them out, checking the history, it can be something that's very interesting and vary. Which takes us to number 10, toy or video game developer. Have you ever decided to create your own toy or game? then this might be it for you. There are many games that have uh, done very well, even um, board games of all kinds that get branded, get real, get, get a lot of uh, exposure and sell very well. So this can actually be something that you can make good money off if you're, if you're good at it. So to give you an example, there is a, I don't remember the brand name, but there is a set of dolls that is specifically geared towards uh, young girls 
And this is kind of like an educational set that focuses on history. So the dolls might be from different uh, points in, in the human civilization. And you will actually have an environment that is crafted in order to kind of like teach the girls the, the history of, uh, of the human race, specifically from, the woman, from a woman's perspective. So this is something that is both um, educational from a history point of view, but also entertaining because the girls get to play with the dolls and they get to play with the dolls in, in, a, in a specific setting, right? So t I don't remember the name of the brand now, but it's one that's doing very well and it has actually positioned itself as a premium kind of brand. Uh, so they're actually uh, making quite good margins on each set that they sell. And parents seem to love this because it's very educational uh, for their little girls. So just so you don't think, you don't go thinking that this is kind of like a boys club, like, oh yeah, like video games, games and whatnot. No, you can do toys for, for girls and boys and uh, anyone else. And in that sense, if you're really good at it, you can potentially make a, a good living off of it. Now you know some cool occupations out there that you can go and look into. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to it, hit the notification bell and comment below. Also share it with your friends if you think they will find it interesting.